you very much. All right, thank you for having me, Kelly, and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, travel leaders and, and princes have done these events for years, both in person and other times uh, virtually like we are today. And primarily it's because we know there's an awful lot that goes into your decision about your Alaska vacation. Just take a look at this photo. It's just an absolutely stunning picture. This is uh, the ship, uh, for a view from the ship viewing Marjorie Glacier, which is deep into Glacier Bay National Park. Marjorie Glacier is a mile wide at the water. You can see how dramatic it is. The last few years, it's been calving quite a bit. That means the ice falling off into the water off the left-hand side primarily, and, uh, and hopefully it will continue that way. More guests choose Alaska than any other cruise line. We've been uh, voted as the number one cruise line by travel advisors for 19 straight years, as well as an industry publication uh, voting us as the number one uh, cruise line in Alaska as well for not those same 19 years. Every story with Princess starts with what we call our shared purpose, which is to share our world. In, case, in today's case, that's Alaska. Even though we do cruise the entire world with uh, cruise uh, vacations in Caribbean, Mexican Riviera, Hawaii, South America, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, all across the breadth of Europe, Canada, New England, but Alaska is our heart and soul. That's what we're focusing on today to protect the earth, leaving behind a smaller environmental footprint and to create lasting memories. That's our goal. Everything we do, whether it be build an entire new ship, entirely new ship, or create a new activity or a shore excursion or tweak an itinerary, everything we do, uh, regardless if it's large or small, it's designed to create lasting memories for our guests. Uh, a couple, just a couple of house, housekeeping items. We'll talk some uh, about Alaska at kind of a high level. We'll walk through what's considered a sample cruise tour. We'll go through some frequently asked questions. And then uh, we'll just continue on from there. The number one reason that we say, most of us, that we want the reason that we want to go to Alaska is to see glaciers and experience what they're all about. This photo also is Marjorie Glacier, deep into Glacier Bay National Park. You can see the people on deck uh, dressed uh, like we would in the shoulder season here locally. Um, the princess ships have all been built with ample public deck area for scenic viewing, glaciers uh, uh, viewing. And in particular, when you're cruising between Vancouver and Anchorage, which is a seven day cruise, it's the itinerary that you cruise on when you're doing a cruise tour. We always offer two glacier viewing opportunities. And in Glacier Bay National Park, the ship enters the bay early in the morning. We have a park ranger that spends the entire day, boards the ship and spends the entire day entertaining our guests. The number, <laughs> excuse me, the number two reason we say we want to go to Alaska typically is to see Denali Park, the mountains, and the scenery. And so, by all means, on each cruise tour, we spend at least one night, oftentimes two, sometimes three nights at one of our lodges around Denali Park. And uh, with limited exceptions, our cruise tours include a tour into the park itself. Denali National Park is 6 million acres. So of course we won't see all of it, but we'll have an opportunity to tour into the park on tours of varying lengths. And then of course, wildlife is always a real key as well. I can just about guarantee you, remember I said just about, guarantee that you'll see uh, caribou if you do a cruise tour. Hopefully you'll see the doll sheep as well. Really quite spectacular as you're touring into Denali Park and you see the doll sheep on just the absolute sheer cliffs of, uh, of Denali. Uh, moose and bears seem to be kind of the wild cards. And by all means, uh, I suggest that you make sure to have binoculars with you and I suggest each person have their own binoculars. And especially when you're in Glacier Bay National Park, you'll have an opportunity potentially to see bear right on the shoreline. So uh, be on the lookout. And then the last of the wild of the 
Denali or wildlife big five, the Alaska big five are the wolves in Alaska as well. So hopefully you'll be able to see wildlife and experience it. It's clearly the, the third reason that, uh, third top reason that most of us want to go to Alaska, but also seeing the whales too. Now, of course, uh, there are a couple of highlights or areas that are kind of highlighted for whales. Our onboard naturalists onboard the ship throughout the cruise will certainly point out uh, and conduct narrative through the ship's uh, speaker system and uh, for sure point out whales whenever and always when they see them in advance. So there's a couple of spots that you that are a little bit more likely will, where you will see whales. One is when you're cruising through the inside passage. The other one is in and out of uh, the port of Ketchikan. North to Alaska is an onboard enrichment program that Princess really focuses on. We're really proud of it. It's where we bring the destination on board the ship and help provide you with more and more destination experience. So for example, I mentioned the park rangers board the ship, spend the day with our customers when we're cruising in Glacier Bay National Park. You'll see this picture of, uh, of a ranger entertaining a couple of different small families. Maybe when you're in Skagway, uh, while it changes from ship to ship on some sailings, we'll have a real life dog musher board the ship, conduct a little presentation on sled dog uh, uh, racing and, and mushing and bring their puppies on board the ship with them as well. You can take, you can hold them, you can pet them, you can take a picture with them. Or maybe you wanna participate in some uh, ax throwing and uh, instruction and activity on board the ship kind of conducted by one of our real life Alaskans. A couple of things about Princess that really stand out. We've been in business since 1965. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. We're part of Carnival Corporation. And Alaska is a destination we've been cruising to since 1969. So coming up will be our 54th year cruising in Alaska. We know it well. It's our heart and soul, our bread and butter. And uh, three of the real highlights that stand out are number one, this onboard enriching enrichment program that we offer provides you with this incredibly enriching experience. The rail service, dedicated rail service. When you see a princess rail car with the prince or a rail car with the princess logo on it, you can rest assured that's a, a car that princess owns and we operate, we maintain. And while the, the Alaskan Railroad is the operating railroad for us, the cars themselves where you ride are staffed by Princess employees. And then the lodges and the employees really stand out as well. We own five different lodges in Alaska, and the employees are oftentimes local Alaskans as well. All right, just a couple of ideas on, on the itineraries that we have. We have, we have several different itineraries. One, uh, that's really two, is either round trip from Seattle or round trip from Vancouver. And so on the round trip to Seattle, you'll fly to Seattle in most cases, board the ship, cruise north as far north as uh, Glacier Bay or Hubbard Glacier or one of our ports uh, up north and cruise back to Seattle, offering one day of glacier viewing uh, along with uh, several ports of call, Juneau, Ketchikan, and Skagway in most cases, or round trip from Vancouver for either seven, or excuse me, either 10 days or 11 days, depending on the week that you go, uh, calling on uh, one opportunity to see glaciers as well. All right, so you might see Glacier Bay, you might see Dawes Glacier, which is a beautiful dark blue glacier deep into Endicott Arm, which is a national fjord. And then also uh, you might see Hubbard Glacier as well. All right, then uh, our voyage of the glaciers leaves from Vancouver, cruising north for seven days, ending up in Whittier, which is the port city for Anchorage. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and this is the itinerary you'd be on if you're doing a cruise tour. Again, starting in Vancouver, cruising north for seven days, and then arriving into uh, Alaska to do the land tour. All right, so kind of a sample walkthrough of what a cruise tour would look like. 
in my sample today, I'm going to go from Vancouver North. And I want you to know, please, that you can actually start your trip north and, and end up back south. So we're going to start in Vancouver. You're going to fly to Vancouver, uh, board the ship uh, late in the afternoon. The ship will set sail right from downtown Vancouver uh, at a port called Canada Place. Board the ship, tour it, get to know the ship a little bit. And then the first entire day, we cruise through the Inside Passage, which is the area between Vancouver and Ketchikan. So it's a wonderful experience. It takes 30 hours to uh, go this trek. This is a likely place where you might see whales. Our onboard naturalist spends most of their day on board the bridge, conducting wonderful narrative, and you'll enjoy all day long just soaking in the scenery. Ketchikan is typically our first port of call. There's some slight variations between uh, ports of call. Ketchikan is well known for its totem poles and also for um, it being the salmon fishing capital of the world. You can get off the ship in Ketchikan, just enjoy it by strolling around on your own with a self-guided walk uh, and map in hand. Or you might take a shore excursion that goes out to the edge of town to a, a, an Indian village where you can see the totem poles in person. Juno, as you're going north, like we are in our example, it's your first opportunity to see a glacier. That's Mendenhall Glacier on the upper left-hand side of the screen. Mendenhall Glacier is about 10 miles out of town. You can see it either by um, taking a motor coach out to the visitor center and view it from there, or you can do something just really quite extreme and take a helicopter ride that lands out on top of the glacier. Really quite exhilarating. Libby Riddles, the first female Iditarod champion, boards the ship and spends the day with our customers conducting a presentation and sometimes brings her sled dogs with her. This is a great port of call to go on a smaller boat whale watch <clears throat> experience. Uh, where uh, you're on a boat about uh, 100 passengers and oftentimes the uh, local vendor will all but guarantee you'll see whales. Also, it's a great port to go salmon fishing as an example. If you are looking through the shore excursions and you see one that's described in part by uh, with the words, cook my catch, it's a shore excursion where you can go out and you can fish. Hopefully you catch fish. You can tell the, the guide, the fishing guide, that you'd like to have it prepared for you on the ship that evening. So in this case, uh, this on this shore excursion, the, the people wanted their fish prepared for them on the ship. The ship, the vendor uh, arranges for it to be de delivered to the ship. And here's the platter that served. And this is my own personal platter that uh, my family caught fish several years ago. Actually, it was the summer of 2018. And we caught fish, we asked for it to be prepared. And this is the platter they brought to us that evening. It was quite a spectacular uh, display. And the picture doesn't really do it justice. It's about a four foot platter that they brought to us. Skagway is our next port of call. In most cases, it's the port of call for the gold rush of 1898. Uh, you might take a shore excursion that takes you straight up the mountain pass, following one of the two main paths the men took to seek their fortune in the Yukon, seek their fortune in gold. Here's just a personal photo leaving Skagway. I do urge you, if you have an opportunity to go to one of the top decks, Upon leaving Skagway, go to the rear of the ship and you'll have this tremendous view. Glacier Bay National Park in the upper left-hand corner uh, <coughs> or College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier. You'll be able to view two of the three of those. And then from there, uh, you'll experience glaciers for two different days. Here's a picture of Marjorie Glacier deep into Glacier Bay National Park. Whittier is where we arrived for the port city for Anchorage. So if you were not going to do a land tour, you would go to the airport from here and fly home. Uh, if you're doing a land tour, in most cases, you would board the Prince's rail car, go right by downtown Anchorage, 
and you'll be uh, at our Denali Lodge in most cases, depending on which land itinerary you took. And you'll see, uh, uh, you'll stay at our Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge, which is the staging point for tours into the park. The entrance to the park is just a, a mile down the road from the lodge, very convenient and uh, wonderful experience. So you'll spend in most cases one or two nights, sometimes three here. Or you might have an itinerary that includes a stay at our Mount McKinley Lodge. It's only 45 miles away. If you look at the uh, deck on the right side uh, of the photo here of the, of the lodge, it's the only public lodge, excuse me, public deck in Alaska that potentially has a view of Mount McKinley, excuse me, Mount Denali. We've changed the name back to Mount Denali. So he'll be here. This will be your view. If the weather cooperates and the clouds clear, the mountain is 41 miles away, and it's really a spectacular view. Also, if anybody has seen the TV uh, reality TV show Treehouse Masters, the, the group of people that have gone around the world build, building these exotic, elaborate tree houses built one on our uh, Mount McKinley Princess Lodge grounds, and uh, it too has a view of Mount McKinley as well, potentially. If you go south of Anchorage, you'll uh, have an opportunity to stay at our Kenai Lodge. Uh, the Kenai Peninsula is oftentimes described as where Alaskans go to vacation. Then our Copper River Lodge is eight hours east of Denali and tucked way back in the wilderness uh, on the Copper River. Uh, and you'll have an opportunity to experience really our most exotic lodge of all. So there are about 20 different choices of land itineraries once you get off the cruise. When you sit down with one of Kelly's staff or visit with them, they'll be able to help you out uh, in terms of uh, what is the best itinerary and which one suits your needs. And then in some cases, we go all the way north to Fairbanks as well. All right, as we kind of wrap up here, I'm going to go through a couple of sample questions, and then I'll have Kelly see if there's any questions in the chat. What's the best time to go, best time of the year, and uh, which direction, northbound or southbound, is the best? And I can tell you from experience that, and from all reports as well, that uh, if you go early in the spring, the Alaska season starts early to mid-May, if you go early in the spring, there'll be a, still be snow in the lower elevations. Things will be cool and crisp. The weather will be. If you wait till mid-June into July and early August, the full growing season will be in full swing. You'll see the large flowers and, and everything that the summer has to offer. If you wait till fall, you'll see some fall colors as well. So it's really just a question of personal nature. Uh, if you go early in the year, Pricing will be at its lowest, and then it starts to go up a little bit, and then starts in mid-August to start declining a little bit. Uh, not a significant difference. Then if you go northbound or southbound, they're both equally as great. Uh, one, again, one of Kelly's staff will be able to go over that with you, figure out which one is really just the right one for you. And it might be something as simple as air scheduling uh, in terms of which direction might be better to go. Packing. Packing and dress on board the ship during the day, people will be packed just like you'd expect to see people packed in Alaska with blue jeans and khaki pants and sweatshirts. During the evening, the spirit of the dress code on board the Princess ship uh, for five nights, five of the seven nights is called Smart Casual. Smart Casual just simply means that everybody looks nice. Then there are two nights that are considered formal. And on the formal nights, the men should wear a coat and tie or a sweater and tie for sure. And the women, anywhere from a dressy pantsuit to a long gown. You'll really see it all. After you've made your purchase, which likely will include air, but you might have your own airline tickets, might include insurance, you'll decide that. The additional spending that you can expect after that would be any of the shore excursions you purchase in the ports of call or land excursions, which are additional activities from the lodges additional to what's already described as included. Dining at the lodges is additional, likewise on the train. And we have a couple of specialty dining restaurants on board the ship.
Wi-Fi, crew appreciation, formerly known as gratuities, and beverages are additional as well. Now you notice I have a little asterisk there and just a slide or two, I'm gonna describe that better. Everybody has to have a passport. Make sure you pull out your passport, make sure it's good for at least a year past, excuse me, at least six months past the date you expect to have your last travel on. And then something that oftentimes people wonder about is when is the best time to book? We are in the kind of the tail end of the busiest booking period for Alaska for this coming season. So by all means, you wanna consider booking your trip right now or as early as possible. So we have a great promotion going on right now called Best Sale Ever. It runs through uh, March 1st, including March 1st. It includes uh, uh, a fare that includes your beverage package, Wi-Fi and gratuities. I'm gonna talk more about that yet again. It also includes uh, a shipboard credit based on the type of cabin you book as well. So our princess standard price, <coughs> excuse me, is your princess experience without additional amenities. Princess plus pricing includes the beverage package, Wi-Fi for a single de device, along with crew appreciation, again, formerly known as gratuities, a couple of premium uh, desserts per day, and then two fitness classes per cruise as well to offset those premium desserts that you might indulge in. <clears throat> and if you buy our highest package, it includes some additional amenities as well, including reserved seating in the theater, uh, and unlimited fitness classes. If you have a heritage in the military, make sure you let the travel advisor know. They'll ask you for your copy of your DD-214 form. Uh, we'll send that into Princess to see if you qualify for an added shipboard credit, really as our salute to the military. All ships are medallion class, uh, providing a medallion class experience, which really means in a nutshell, that you're gonna be able to register for your cruise in the comforts of your home before you ever leave. When you arrive the pier, you'll have your passport in one hand, you'll have your medallion uh, either on a lanyard or in your hand. You walk through security and board the ship. And from there, uh, medallion acts as what used to be your key card, but it does a whole lot more as well. All right. If anybody is looking for a luxury experience in Alaska, you might want to consider another cruise line that I represent as well that Kelly staff sells and that's Cunard line offering uh, 10 or 11 night round trip sailings from Vancouver as well. So we thank you for coming here. Just another spectacular view of, uh, of uh, Marjorie Glacier deep in the Glacier Bay National Park. On the left-hand side is where she's been calving an awful lot the last few years and likely will continue unless a different pattern might emerge. Kelly, do we have any chat questions that have come up? I don't see anything in the chat at the moment. Maybe we'll give everyone just a couple of seconds here to type in a question if they have anything. But wow, that was a lot of info and so many beautiful pictures that if they don't make you want to go to Alaska, I don't know what will. But as a friendly reminder, your travel advisor is well versed in the Princess product in Alaska. So please feel free to reach out to your advisor or anyone on the travel leaders team about booking your Alaskan cruise. And I don't see anything coming in here. So we'll wrap up for the day again, everyone. Thank you for coming and thank you, Joe, for your presentation. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me, Kelly, and everybody for joining us. We oh, loved it. We'd love to entertain you. I saw one last minute question, so we'll make sure that we get this answered. What is the longest land tour? Well, very good question. I believe it's nine days on land. Seven days cruise, nine days on land. I might be off a day there. I'd have to pull out the brochure, but I'm pretty sure it's one where you spend time at each of our five lodges. Uh, so the availability of that is quite uh, limited. Uh, by all means, it's a phenomenal experience, and you really get to experience absolutely everything we offer in Alaska. 
All right. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.